In our first two speakers, they spoke very well, and they mentioned the whole idea of, of learning from, from mistakes. And this is one thing I teach a number of short-term um, short intensive week-long week courses. And on the first, first day of the program, we always give the students a list of seven different principles that we will follow during the program. One of those principles is learning from, from your mistakes. So we, we actually ask the students to make mistakes during the course. Another, another of the principles is we ask the students to please contribute their own, their own ideas if they have any, any um, ideas to, to improve the course in any way. And in fact, this was where I first heard about this particular um, web, web application tool known, known as Anki. It was uh, Dario, an Italian student. So thank you, Dario. <laughs> He gets a nod for, 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 for this particular presentation. So it's called Using Anki as a Vocabulary Aid. And before I, I get going, has it, anyone ever, ever used Anki before, or have you heard about it? Well, hopefully when the 12 minutes are up, you'll have a good idea to use it, and you'll be able to maybe share it with your own students, even use, use it for, for your, your own learning as well. Okay, so over the next uh, 10 minutes, I'm going to show you what Anki is, how it works, and how it can help both you and, and your students. So usually at the start of any, any course, we start with a, a needs analysis of the students. And can I just ask you, when you, do, when you conduct a needs analysis with new students in, in your schools, what are some of the difficulties that they mention with, with the language, or, or what are some of the objectives that they tend to that they tend to list at the start of their their course. Can I, can I have some S S idiomatic language? Idiomatic language, okay. Yeah, yeah. Understanding different accents. Understanding different different accents. So li li listening skills, of course. Mm -hmm. Prepositions. Prepositions. Lexical recall. Lexical recall. Okay. Well. Oh, they they have all the bits, but they can't they can't produce. So okay. On paper, it's all good, but they, they want to read it. So li linking it all together, which would be linked with with the lexical recall. Synonyms and homophones. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So we yeah, often um, some of the suggestions that that, that you gave, um, I, I've also also heard them for, from from my students, and it could be grammar structures. They they will need to improve the different skills. Um, improving listening, especially to native native speakers or from different accents, and then certain lexical chunks, fra phrasal verbs and set phrases, especially at, with students at a higher, higher level. These can often be the needs that the students will identify at the start of their course. So this presentation is going to be how about the Anki, Anki software can help help the students with probably the the last two two points more so vocabulary and phrasal verbs or le lexical re recall. And it, I, I hope that, that you'll be able to see how, how useful it will that it can be. Okay, so when when we teach a piece of vocabulary for a student to really to really know um, the, 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 that word to get over the, the learning bur burden, as it were, we can go in into a, I've listed nine, nine different aspects of a particular word or piece piece of vocabulary. We can look at the form and the meaning. We can look at the concept and the re reference. Is it similar to a, a, a term in, their, in the L1? What are the word associations they, they have with it? How can they categorize a particular word or phrase? You look at the form, of course, so the spoken form. Can, is the pronunciation and intonation correct? The written form, can they, uh, does, it, does it follow the, the usual English spelling, spelling rules? And we will also look at the, the word parts, the different affixes that make up the words. And then, of course, the use, the grammatical functions, collocations, and also the constraints, the lim lim limitations on use so that it sounds naturally. All of these are very important if we want to get a student to, re to really know a word or, or, or a phrase. But, of course, one of the challenges challenge is that we only have our students, we only have contact time um, with, with our students for a cer certain amount, amount of time per day, especially in, in short-term short courses. Many, many students would only study for 15, 15 hours, 20 hours a week in a class. 
So our time is limited. We are under, under pressure in the syllabus. A lot of our schools we use a communicative approach, so we, we simply don't have, don't have time um, to go into each new piece of vocabulary in, in that much detail, uh, like, like I showed in the, the previous slide. Or else another, of, of course we can come across the, the situation where s some students will be much more familiar with the vocabulary than, than, than others. There will always be different, diff different levels of learning within, within the class. And then, but of course, this comes back to what Joanne mentioned in her, her presentation. She, she was speaking about the students who will have the, the, a, put a great focus on, on the exam at the, at the end of their, their, their course. And I've just listed some of the components of the, the Cambridge ESOL suite, suite of exams. Because really, especially at the, the high, higher, higher levels, to, to score well in the, in the use of English sections, it's, it's very important that, that students have, have the in-depth knowledge of the, of the vocabulary to, to be able to succeed in, in the, those particular areas. Yet sometimes in just in, in the classroom in the contact time that we have with the students, we simply don't don't have time to go to go go into the, the detail that is necessary. So that's that's where in, independent learning on behalf of the students co comes into play. And I will show you how, how the Yankee soft software can, can help your students achieve their goals. So here's a solution. Um, if anyone else was at the ELT Ireland annual conference uh, this February, you would, would have heard Sean Wilden who told us that mobile learning can make you and your students happy. Okay, sorry, uh, for, but basically, the, <laughs> I, I did notice here in Atlantic Language Galway that you have um, a no, mo no mobiles in the classroom policy. But in, in fact, nowadays, it, it's important that, that we do, do embrace mo mobile technology because this is what our, our students use all the time. And if we can facilitate learning um, in, a, in an app, why not embrace it? Why not, why not uh, allow our students bring, bring, bring the tools with them so that they can, they, they, they can improve their, their, their learning on, on the go through a medium that they understand and that they will be using anyway. So I'm going to talk to you about the Anki Droid flash flashcards. Um, do you use flashcards yourselves with, with, with your students, or does it depend on the, the level? It depends on the level. Sometimes you use with elementaries and yeah. briefly gets it, it, Exactly, and for me, before I discovered um, this, this software, I, I would have only considered using flashcards with, with those low, lower level students. But I think the beauty of the, the software is it's very very flexible and you can adapt it to, to students of, of any level. In fact, they aren't just used for, for, for language learning, but they're used across the board in any, um, in any subject that, that requires uh, memory recall. And, and language, um, there will be vocabulary gaps um, which will impede the communicative pro process if, if that lexical recall isn't there. So they can be used in an anatomy students studying for, for, for law exams. It's not just language, but over the next couple of slides I will show you, show you how, how you can apply them to, to your lang language, language teaching. Okay, so what are Anki flashcards? Anki is a program which makes remembering things easy, and it is based on two simple concepts. The first being active recall testing, and the second being space repetition. So I mentioned earlier on that our time with our students is limited. So we, could, of course, we can encourage students to um, read widely, um, to watch watch English language television programs and li listen to the radio, interact with native speakers as much as possible. But one one way that Anki flashcards differ from these these methods of, of learning is that using these fa flashcards, it's an active form of learning. Often what, watching television or, or reading can just be a pass, passive form, form of learning. With the, with the flash, flashcard, they, they work the same, the same way as the flashcards that you, you might have used um, with, with lower level teachers. You'll have, you'll have a, a question and then an answer, but it's up, up to you to think of the answer and then check, 
confirm if, 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 if you've, you've got it right. Space, space repetition is another another um, key feature of, of this program, which I, I'll talk to you about in, in a moment. So another feature of our memory, we have to use it or lose it. So can anyone tell me what you had for dinner last Monday week? I think that's the 11th of May. Sandwich. Sandwich. <laughs> 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 Yeah, well, one, one thing about it, because um, unless, uh, uh, unless it was a very memorable restaurant or a party and you told your, your friends and colleagues regularly about it, you, won't, you simply won't, won't remem remember it. And um, according to the developers of Anki, we forget 75% of material learned within a 48-hour period. So this idea of, of repetition is, is very, very important, and it comes... To, we come to this idea of space repetition. So what space repetition means, um, basically it's a fancy way of saying don't, don't cram. What we need to do is we need to uh, have, have repeated contact with, 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 the, with the material over a long, a long period of time. And what the Anki, the Anki flashcards will do is they will allow us to be exposed to the new material, the new vocabulary as, as it may be. Over, over a long space of time. The way it actually works, and this is the, I suppose the, I could say the key selling point of Yankee, even though it is free open source software, so I'm not, not here to sell anything. But when you try to recall an answer, you get a chance to give it a rating. So you say, is it hard, medium, or easy? If it's an easy answer, you, mu you might not um, see that card again for another, another five days. If it's a word or a term that that caused quite a lot of difficulties for you, for you to, to recall, or you simply didn't didn't remember, didn't know it. It'll repeat it much more frequently, perhaps every every, every f f f f five or ten ten turns in in, in, in the card card pack. So this this is the way the way it works. So it means that the it's it's the way of sorting the, the most most challenging material so that you'll be exposed to it on a, in a, a on a more uh, regular basis thereby helping mem memory recall. So the original slogan of Anki was, you can forget about forgetting. And just before we go for our coffee break, I'm just going to give you a short demonstration of what it looks like. Um, basically, it's op open so source software, and there are, are many uh, educators and learners who put together databases of these cards in a host of different subjects. So we have languages along the top and then other subjects in the second category. Here are some of the ones that, that I use just for my own learning and also my, my teaching. Um, here is a, a, a pack that I downloaded uh, with idioms and phrasal verbs. Often the areas that can challenge are B2, C1, C1 learners bring up. The student will have this displayed on their, their smartphone. They will have to try to recall the definition or maybe a sentence with bring up. And then they get the, the meaning and maybe an example. And right here we have the red, green and blue options. So you simply categorize how easy was it for you to recall that def definition. And then this will automatically sort it so you, you either get that definition again uh, frequently, or less just frequently, depending on how, 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 how hard, hard it was. So just some of the advantages, it helps with self-directed learning and memory recall. There are hundreds and thousands of databases that you can, you can download for yourself, or which can be much more useful, you can create your own content as well. So especially for um, English for specific purposes, um, you could you could set this as a task for your students to create different databases. It's very, very simple to use, and they have a very um, self-explanatory manual on the web. So the resources, the Anki, Anki flashcards, you can get it on the Android or iPhone app. There is a very, very clear manual online, and james.englishweek.ie is my email address if you have any other questions about it.